You know, the two things that people want most in, out of their golf game is they want more consistency, probably that'd be number one, and then secondly, everyone would like to hit it further. So what does it really take to be more consistent? I mean, that, most people think that could be a very complicated answer, but really it's, it's pretty simple. In other words, the golf club needs to come from the inside of part of the golf ball as opposed to the outside. So looking from here, if the golf club is coming down and approaching from the inside, that's what we want. That's number one, as opposed to straight down the line or for the outside. Number two, the club head needs to contact the ball with a reasonably square club face. Okay, so it, it's not severely closed or open. And the hands need to be forward. Okay, so those are the conditions of impact that make the ball fly. So from the inside, fairly square club face and a leaning shaft. But in order for you to know how to get there, you have to diagnose yourself. And um, I think that you wouldn't go to a pharmacy and get a prescription without a diagnosis first. So I think it's really important to get that diagnosis. And how do you do that? Well, you can get lessons or what we're going to do, if you follow along, I'm going to help you diagnose yourself, which is then in turn going to allow you to use your bender stick in the most efficient manner possible. Okay, so what I want you to think of is dominoes. The dominoes are all set up, one falls against the other and they run, the, they run all the way through. Well, if you're trying to work on something down here, but this domino is tipped over, you're working out of order. And that's the purpose of this video is to really have you follow along step by step and find out which one of your dominoes is out of whack first so we can get that fixed. And by using the stick, not only will it help fix your swing, but it's going to help you diagnose yourself. So let's follow along and we'll go through the segments one at a time. And, and if you do that, then you'll eventually get to the point of where you see that you need the most work and then you're going to be practicing efficiently. Okay, the first segment or the domino in diagnosing your swing and helping you become more consistent is you have to aim well. I would say 90% of people that we teach or that I see uh, out on the golf course playing do not aim well and mostly it's to the right. So what you need to do and, and to take uh, good use or make good use of the bender stick, you have to have good aim. So what I have here is I have these rods you can get these at Home Depot or anywhere, or you can just use two clubs. What you do is you pick a target out. We've got the flag there that you can see, and I lay this down, stand behind it. I'm going to get back here. You stand behind it, and you get it aiming right at the target, okay? Then you lay the next one down parallel to it, okay? It doesn't matter where this points. It just has to be parallel with that, okay? Then what you do is you take a, uh, a ball, and you can either tee it up or set it in the ground there, and then you set up and you make sure that your feet and your knees and your hips and everything are parallel to that. It's very important because if you don't set up right, you have to make a bad swing to hit a good shot. Okay, so it's really important that we get our setup right because that everything is from here on out, all, the next dominoes is all geared toward that setup. So I'm going to show you from the front view now what you need to do in addition to having good alignment. Okay, so if you have good alignment now with your rods, the other thing is to your setup that's really, really important in your golf swing is when you take your address position like this, the checkpoints for you, if you dropped your hands, they should hit the inside of your left thigh. And if you take your right hand off the club, you should be able to touch your right knee. Now, most people that aim to the right, they get their shoulders open like this and their right arm and right side is high and you, there's no way you could touch your knee. Being able to touch your knee sets your spine angle and it tilts it to the right. Every athletic sport where something is hit or thrown, the body is tilted back away from whatever it is throwing to or swinging at. And so golf's no different, but most people set up this way. So in diagnosing yourself, Look down, make sure your hands are on the forward enough, they're on the inside of the thigh. Take your right hand off the club and touch your right knee, and that's your setup. So now you have, you have the proper aim, and you got the proper setup with your tilt here, and that's the first domino. You get that right, now we can move on. So, so check yourself, see if you're there. If you are, great. If you're not, you're already working on your swing, okay? Now let's go to the second one.
The second domino here that you have to do to get consistent and also create distance is you have to turn your body because the golf swing begins from the body out. If I take my arms away and all I do is turn my body back and through, there's a certain way that it should turn. And that way should be around the spine. And in the first segment, I said, you know, we have this tilt where we touch your right knee, okay? So we have established this spine angle. And as we turn, we have to maintain it, okay? But if I turn and my hip sways to the right or my head moves, then we're gonna change the spine angle, okay? And I'll, I'll mention here in a moment why that's important, but here's how you diagnose yourself to see if you're doing it right. You take the stick, bender stick, you put it in the ground and you just stick it behind you. You put the ball right next to your right hip. So what you do is it's sitting here, you just move it till it's right against your hip. And then what you do is you tee up a golf ball. Okay, so I'm gonna put a tee it down right where the ball goes. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna hit balls and I wanna make sure that my hip moves away from that yellow, the yellow ball. If my hip moves into the yellow ball, then the lower body is shifting to the right and that's gonna cause a reverse pivot, okay? So number one, in order to keep the spine stable, you have to keep the head where it is and you gotta let the hips actually gap away. It's called gapping away. And the reason they do that is my body is thinner this way as it is this way. So if I turn and you're looking at me from there, I should gap away. Otherwise, if my hip stays over here or I try to shift my weight to the right, then my spine angle is going to tip the wrong way. Okay, so test number one is hit some balls and see if you move away from this. You don't bump it, okay? Then the second thing you do is to make sure your head isn't moving. So you take the stick, you put it in front of you like this. Okay, so I'm going to put my hat down here. And what you do is you set up. You get in the setup like we talked about earlier and you want this ball to be about a, about an inch from your right ear okay and so now if i turn and i move into it i know that my top half is moving uh, laterally or swaying or if i hit a ball and my head kind of moves away from it this way that's going to be a byproduct of that reverse pivot again so what you want to diagnose is you want to diagnose the make, make the hips work the right way in the backswing and you want to make sure that your head isn't moving all around. Now there'll be a naturally there'll be a little bit of movement or there can be a little bit of movement to the right which is okay but you definitely don't want your head moving away from the ball this way. If it has a tendency to move just a tiny bit over there's not much pressure that's okay. And the last thing that you would do uh, in diagnosing how your body's turning while hitting a ball is just take the stick and what I'll do is I'll stick it out in front here and you put your hat back on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it down and I'm going to put this so my hat is right on the bill of my cap is right on the top of this okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tee the ball up again And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a swing, and if I move away from it going back, then I know I'm losing my posture, okay? But if my head stays right on it and I can swing through, and I'm just making practice swings here because we're, we're kind of limited on our space. But if I just do this and I just swing right on through, and can, I can keep my head there. If I go down, if my head goes down, it will actually knock my hat off, and I'll feel that resistance, okay? so. What we're trying to do, again, is we're trying to turn the body in the proper manner because that has the biggest influence on how you can swing the club. If I'm in a reverse pivot, which is this method here, then the golf club is always going to swing more outside in. I'm going to cut across the ball, I'm going to slice, and I'm going to have all chicken wing. All kinds of problems cause, are caused from the club coming from the outside. And one of the major causes is this body position. Okay, so just like if you watch football or anything, they're back here, they're turning and throwing. Golf swing, you want to be back here in this position here so you can accelerate the club and turn through. Okay, so that's domino number two, and those checkpoints are very important. So if you're there and you're doing that and your hips are turning good, then we move on to domino number three.
Okay, so kind of catching up now. We got, we've got good aim, number one. We've got our aim and our posture is good. Number two, we got to make a good turn. We got to make that turn proper. We got to get those hips working right and get the upper body working right if, and, and the way it turns. Now, the third part of this is, now let's say we have that, okay? We've got the good aim, we've got our body turning right. Well, now we have to look at where the arms go. Now we can look at kind of where the arms in the club go. And uh, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they tend to lift the club too high. Most people have the club too up in the air. And so to diagnose yourself as to kind of where you are, uh, you take the bender stick, you stick it in the ground, and I have it, I have it pretty much all the way out, so it's as tall as it can get. I'm going to stick it in the ground, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk up underneath of it until the, the stick touches my shoulder. Okay, once it touches my shoulder, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move forward just about an inch. So this is about one inch from my shoulder. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna put my T down. It's important to mark it with a T, and then what I always do with all of these drills and diagnosis is I put another T in the ground to mark the spot. So in case I hit the T out when I'm swinging, I know where to replace it, okay? So now what you do is if you take a backswing, and so many people tend to take the club in and they lift, but if I lift, I'm gonna bump this every time. If I make a golf swing here <clears throat> where I keep my arms underneath and I swing right on through, underneath, that's what we want, okay? It's very important that the left arm is somewhat in the vicinity of the same line as the shoulders, and that's kind of what this is. Ben Hogan had a famous book where he had a plane of glass and a hole cut out of it and, the head, and his head stuck through, and the whole premise was to keep the arms underneath the glass. Don't let anything break the glass. So that's what we're doing here. So we don't want to go up. We want to feel like it's a little more around. Now the second part of the top of the backswing that people struggle with is too long a swing where they have this kind of thing where they really overswing or they break down. And what you need to have in the top of your backswing is width. And width is this direction right here is taking um, is making sure your right arm is staying away from you here. Because this right arm basically is only supposed to bend 90 degrees. Okay, you see, so this would be more than that, right? So what I'm turn, I want to turn, I want to keep my arm down, and I want good width. So to help you diagnose that again, or to practice it, you take the bender stick and you put it in the ground behind you. And what you do then is you stand here and you turn until this touches. Now, you, the more I, if I uh, back this up a little bit, if I move closer under it, I can make a bigger swing. Okay, if I get further away, it's obviously gonna restrict my swing. So what I wanna do is I wanna get it, I wanna make some practice swings where my arms are staying wide. Once I've found that spot, then I'm gonna put the T in the ground again. I put the T in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make swings where I don't touch that. So I'm going to turn, stay wide. If I get collapsy, I'm going to feel it every time. So you want to turn back, stay wide, swing through. Looking from this view might give you a little better visual from here. And again, it's not a, you can just move around. If I move a little more this way, a little bigger swing. If I move way over here, I can even get farther back. If I move this direction, then I'm going to be very short. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get to the point where you turn, pretty full turn, but the arms are out wide. You put the T down, practice swinging and hitting shots. And if you're really long and you go to this short swing, it's going to feel really short at first. But you don't see anybody on the PGA Tour with a short swing that hits it short. So you don't have to have that big long swing. And typically when you do have those big long swings, it leads into a lot of problems on the downswing, which is what we're gonna talk about next.
So now moving on, and this is uh, this next part is really where the rubber meets the road, and that is is the, the downswing, and they call the downswing you know transition, which is the start of the downswing, and then you have down at impact and down below the waist. What happens? So, <clears throat> so again, going back, if we got good aim, if we have good aim, that allows us to make a good turn. If we make a good turn, that allows the arms and hands to get in position. Again, using a football analogy, if you took all the quarterbacks in the NFL and you told them all to throw the ball as far as they could and you videotaped them, they would all be very, very similar in the position of, the, of their arms and the body because you have to do that to throw it far. In other words, you wouldn't see any of them throwing a bomb from here. You know, they'd all be turned this way, they'd all have that ball there, and they'd all be turning and launching that thing. So, so once we're in a good position back here, now it makes it possible to have a good downswing. But it doesn't make it automatic. One of the lies <laughs> that I was told years ago was if you have a good backswing, the downswing just takes care of itself. Kind of like one size fits all. Not really good advice, okay? But a good backswing and having these three components or three dominoes ahead make it possible, okay? So here's what you want to do. From the start of the downswing, what people uh, uh, do is they have too much tension in their arms and hands. If you see this club swinging nice and freely like this, watch what happens if I just squeeze this. It doesn't swing anymore. So then I got to use my body to make it move. So most of us have too much tension in our arms and hands at the top of the golf swing, and we tend to use the arms then become part of the body and then we use the body to try to bring the club down or to create club head speed. And what you need to do from the top is you need to let the hands and arms accelerate toward the ball in a straight line. And then to do that, I have to have freedom in my arms. My arms have to be going like this, okay? If you watch somebody jump, if I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna, as high as I could, I'm gonna swing my arms and I'm gonna accelerate and then jump in the air, okay? I'm not gonna jump first and then throw my arms up. In the same way in the golf swing, you don't wanna rotate your body first and then swing your arms. You wanna accelerate your arms and you want your body to blend in with it and match up, okay? So here's what happens. There's two major parts to the golf swing where you can run into trouble in the downswing and that is right from the top and then some people actually do pretty well from here, but then their club does something bad at the bottom, okay? So to, for the top, if you take this bender stick, you stick it in the ground right here and you extend it out about shoulder height, okay? I'm gonna bend it right there about shoulder height. Now, if I take it up to the top and I come this way, I'm gonna bang into it. Okay, and when, it, when I say shoulder height, it's looking from the front view here, just so you can see this. Looking from the front view, that's about shoulder height right there, but it's away from my body slightly, and that also helps with that left arm position being lower, okay, at the top. But if I move out, I'm going to bump it. Okay, so what we have to do first is we have to turn back and we have to swing down underneath of it. Okay, so that's, a, that's how you can initially start to tell whether or not you're using your shoulders or whether your arms are coming down. Okay, so we take it back and swing underneath. Then if we move this down lower, now we lower it down. And what I have players do is I have them take their setup where they touch it. Then they take one step to the left, and now you stay underneath it again. Now this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's a good thing because most people would hit this every time. But if I can take it back, and I can swing through and stay underneath of it, now I know that my arms are working better. And what I've done here, just to give you an example of what that's gonna produce, this bag is round just like a golf ball, okay? So it's a giant golf ball. So if I stick this in the ground here and I swing at this, 
properly, that's where the bag goes, okay? And that's what the ball's gonna do. You're gonna hit it, it's gonna rotate, and you're gonna be able to draw the ball. Most people that come over the top, the bag goes to the left, which is, again, an ex example of what the golf ball is gonna do. That's why they aim to the right. That's why they tend to slice and pull the ball. And they lose a lot of distance because you're swinging across your body. When you do that, then you have to get lucky to hit a good shot. Okay, so I just use this as an indication of why using the bender stick and getting the hands for feedback and getting those hands to get down here as opposed to coming out is so valuable. And then the <clears throat> thing I like to use it for too is I go way down. And I'm gonna set the stick right here. See, I'm gonna move it up just a little bit here. So I'm gonna stick this down low. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go where the shaft and the ball touch each other. Now I'm gonna back up about three fingers. I'm gonna take a step to the left, put a tee down, and basically from here, I wanna be able to swing under. If the club, what they call tips out, it's gonna hit it, okay? And what I do on this one, because I don't want you to hit way out here, I'd make some very slow swings initially without a golf ball. Just put a tee like I did, make some very easy swings, knock the tees out. Once you can do that, then, then start hitting balls and hit them easy at first. And what this is gonna do again is this is gonna allow the club from doing this at the bottom. Okay, so if I can get my arms to come down and I can keep the club head from tipping out, then that bag and the golf ball is gonna to spin to the right, which is what it should do. Ben Hogan had a great saying. It said, to be an accomplished fader of the ball, one must first know how to draw it, okay? And I think he said that because to hit a draw, you gotta come from the inside and you gotta have a good impact position. And if you can do that, you can hit every golf shot. You can, all you gotta to do to hit a fade with the same inside swing is just aim left. So developing that inside swing is what's, what you really got to do to get more consistent and hit the ball farther. Okay, so work on that. Work on those different areas to bring those arms down. And you'll also, if you refer to your DVD that shows the different uses of the stick, there's some other ways to use it as well that will help with that. Okay, so that's a very important segment, but the other ones have led up to that. Okay, and now we'll, we'll go with the last one, which is your follow through because there's actually two sides to the swing. There's what happens behind the ball and what happens through the ball. So let's go to that segment next. Now I hope you're getting a good concept of the, this building effect. It's kind of like if I'm going to drive from Orlando to Chicago, I'm going to follow a road map and I'm going to try to take the most direct route. I'm not gonna grab tips and bits and pieces here and there. And uh, that's what we've tried to lay out for you. So by following an order, by going from alignment, having the right body turn, getting into a pretty good position at the top, doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty good. And then the transition of moving the arms back down in front of you before the shoulders over rotate. And then, then that leads us into a better impact position in kind of this last segment. That keeps you right on the straight road instead of, again, grabbing different tips of different ideas. So, <clears throat> so now that you feel like you're coming in, I wanted to just do one last little thing and mention on that downswing, in that transition, I don't want people to get the wrong idea and think that all I'm telling you to do is swing with your arms, but it's a blending of arm swing and body turn. And what you want is most people turn the body too early and then swing the arms. And, I, and yeah, they should accelerate the arms and then blend in with the turn of the body. And the arms have the greatest distance to travel in the golf swing. Okay, they've got, they, they have almost a half a circle, 160 degrees or so to get back to the ball. The shoulders are only turning about 90 and the hips are maybe only 70 to get back to the ball. So the arms have the greatest distance so they gotta move first and you gotta be relaxed to get them moving. So let's say we have that now. Okay, now we're starting to do that. We're coming more from the inside. And the tendency is for people then to hit behind the ball. The tendency is for you 
to come in from the inside and the club bottoms out early, or maybe you'll hit the ball and you'll hit it to the right because the club face is wide open, or because your old follow through with the chicken wing and spinning the shoulders open, which is pretty common. So what you want to do to diagnose yourself there and also to work on your golf swing is take the bender stick and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to face the camera like I'm hitting the ball at you and what I want you to do is I want you to put the shaft in the ground, right, the stick in the ground about even with your toes and we're going to get probably about maybe about a foot away, okay, that way. And then what I want you to do is I want you to make a swing and try to not hit this. Now the, the people who chicken wing and have a poor release, their shoulders are so active that they would hit this every single time. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to try to swing through and like what I'm doing right now, I'm making very slow swings. You might even do it without a club initially. Just sit there and try to fold up. You wanna get your hands and arms to fold before you turn. Most people turn and then they fold, so they have it backwards. So if I stand here, I let my arms fold up like this, then you can turn, okay? Then you can start taking a club, making some practice swings in doing this. Then you can go faster. And again, this is an exaggeration. In a real golf swing, you don't see people swinging out and up quite that severely. But for most of us and, and most of you out there that are trying to improve your swings, you probably couldn't even do this at first because it's not what you normally do in your golf swing. But if we can work this direction and you can start getting some freedom and some folding there, then, then you're gonna stop the chicken wings and you're gonna, the flight of the ball is gonna get higher. It's gonna you know, have a much better shape to it. So again, we set it right here, make swings, out, out and up. And basically you want to, if you take a, you know, like a dumbbell that you, that you do curls with, that's the motion. Watch, I'm going to come through here. My wrists are going to turn and I'm going to do a curl. Okay, so as opposed to this, this is called a flip release. And when you flip, the elbow goes this way. So when people come from the outside and they flip it and the elbow goes that way, then you're hitting fat shots and thin, loss of distance, a lot of different things. But if I can do that curl and my elbows now fold close together like this, then we're in good shape. And that's what this promotes right here. So if you can make swings, even if they're very easy, again, I'll put a T down here and uh, we'll hit balls doing this. And you'll just hit the ball fold up and then if you turn that's okay. Now there's some people out there that actually do this too much, it's rare, but you can use the stick if I sit in the ground and I set up here, kind of the same thing we did for the backswing but now I step this way, now my hands have to go around to the left and that's usually reserved for the better players who actually swing too much inside out. So I think you're getting a sense for how you can use this in a multiple ways, different ways of setting it up to provide feedback to make your swing do what you want it to do. The key is you got to know what you want it to do and that's why we're you're showing you these diagnoses and things that you can try to see if you can even do it. And once you can, then you know you're really changing. So if you put together the two halves, you're good coming into the ball. You, you've got your hand plane and your hand path is moving properly, not cutting across the shot, not moving to the left or moving severely to the right, then you're going to have a good uh, follow through half of the golf swing. And that kind of completes the circle, so to speak. So what I'd like to do now is just give you a quick summary of, of what we've talked about. And that's our last segment. Okay, just kind of summarize. I hope you understand and you see that there's a particular order that you need to go and that you need to work on your golf swing in. And if you're working on something in the downswing, for instance, but your tilts are wrong, then you're working out of order. You're working in a domino or a section of your golf swing that's ahead of really what the problem is. So there's cause and effect. So that, that kind of thing would be working on the effect and not the cause. 
So follow it along, follow this order, try to do some of those assessments that we have or those you know, checks to make sure that you're, you're doing those things properly. Use your bender stick because I've been in the business a long time and I, tried, I played the tour myself. I worked hard on my golf swing, but it wasn't until I used feedback and used things that barriers and the swing under and over and around until I really started improving. So I wish I would have had that when I was a lot younger. But the other thing about it is, is some of you live in places where the cold weather, we now have a base that you can, if you're using it in a basement or a garage or backyard, you don't have any place to stick it in the ground. So the base is very convenient and you can just move it around. And then obviously you have the regular stick and you can put that either in your golf bag or in the ground. So I hope you'll take advantage of this video and, um, and follow along with the drills on your DVD that you got with a stick. And between the two of those things, you should be in great shape. And I look forward to hearing some great success stories.